welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming another paint with me video slash q and I'm currently painting um, the Murray River basically. So like um, where my family comes from is like a really, really small regional town along the Murray River. And um, I went there recently when I went across the Nullarbor and I was really inspired by the nature there. I'm always so... I always feel um, so connected there, even more so than I do in any other place, probably, like, that I've ever visited. Um, so I started painting this one, and I literally feel like my Nana, like, she used to paint like this. Okay, the um, weather is really on and off, like, cloudy and not cloudy, so if the lighting changes throughout this video, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to be paying attention to this. The next um, topic that I was asked to talk about was... Um, sexism and how I deal with sexism during my daily life. Um, this topic is like a little bit like a downer, but I think it is so necessary to talk about it. Um, you know, sexism is a part of everyone's lives, whether it be like really small things to, you know, larger things. A lot of the time um, in our society, you know, women are treated a lot better than they used to, but than they used to be treated, but like in terms of me, like day to day kind of sexism that I face is mostly harassment. Like I go on to my emails or my comments and there'll be like people who are really um, sending extremely inappropriate, you know, messages or even photos. And you know, there'll be times when I'm walking um, you know, to the beach, or if I'm just walking around Frio, and it doesn't so much happen around here, but like in the city, like if you're walking along like the highways or anything, people will beep at you, people will catcall you, people will even come up to you, and like are just really honestly disgusting. And like I've been experiencing that since I was probably around 13, and I started catching public transport because, you know, before that I was never exposed to society as a whole, but as soon as I started um, being more integrated into society, it kind of like, it was just like a rude shock. And that's when like, it all kind of started. It's an interesting question that I don't actually get asked a lot. Um, so someone just asked me what I want to be when I'm older. Um, and what I want to be when I'm older is honestly, like, I want to open up an animal sanctuary and I want to live in the forest and I want to expand my consciousness and help other people improve and change their lives. What was high school like for you? So high school for me was a bit of like an interesting box of frogs, like... Honestly, like it wasn't a very enjoyable experience for me. High school um, really brought me down, particularly in the earlier years. I kind of like made myself think that I wasn't worthy of, you know, everyone else's time or I wasn't worthy of even being there in the first place. Like, and I really did struggle with a lot of um, self esteem issues throughout my whole high school. So I've just decided to switch cameras. I'm now using my vlogging camera. It'll be a lot easier to keep up with the lighting. So yeah, um, where was I? In year seven, I was carefree and happy. I was so bubbly and so energetic and I just kind of like didn't give too much of a shit what people thought, thought about me. But then when I moved into year eight, everything started like, transforming around me the world became this like awful place where you'd have to you know mold yourself and shape yourself to fit in with everyone else and um it was strange going through that because you know my whole life up until then had been really carefree and I don't know just like problem free I was just like a little child and like you know blowing in the wind kind of thing like I didn't even need to think about impressing other people. Like here's some puberty and here's some random shit that you're gonna have to worry about for the next four years. Like thank you. Um yeah I had some I think I talked about this before on my channel. I have 
had experience with toxic friends. Um, I was friends with some groups of people, you know, back then that were really not good for me to be around. They were would like bitch about their friends behind their backs and then like do the same thing to you. Um, they never really made me feel like I was valued. Um, but then in like year 11, I found a group of friends that really connected with me. They made me feel like I was actually like worth giving a shit about. And um, yeah, in year 12, that just progressed more. And then in year 12, I kind of like lost a part of that group of friends because they turned out to um, be toxic as well. And you know, they used to just tease me about veganism or they'd tease me about my YouTube channel and they'd be like, oh, it's Freya Haley. And I'd just be like, well, fucking good on ya. Like, hilarious, you know? But it is all in the past for me. I don't hold on to any kind of negativity about it. I think it is kind of just weighing you down to do so. So I don't hold any negativity or anything against anyone in high school. Um, how do you know you're ready when to lose your virginity? First of all, virginity is a social construct. The concept of virginity is based on the idea that someone is less pure or less something or more something when they have not had a sexual experience before and then after a sexual experience it's like their whole existence is changed. I kind of believe that that's bullshit. Um, I think that sexual experiences should be freedom. I can't really stand up here and say you'll be ready to have sex for the first time when it is a waxing gibbous moon and it's in Sagittarius because it's just like you don't know unless you know like if you feel right with someone if they are respectful if they make you feel happy and comfortable and safe go for your life I, I love trees like you go for a walk and like the trees that really like speak to me are the ones that look just like funny they look like they've been through like something you know some weird experience. Next question. <clears throat> I'd like to hear what you have to say about being open about your spirituality, not just on social media, but in real life. Have you had any trouble with parents or friends accepting your spirituality and do you gather in any spiritual groups? This is a really good question actually, because um, I actually find a lot more acceptance of myself um, on social media. You know, I have groups of girls that I'm with, like that I talk to on a daily basis, like about spirituality, about, I know, life in general. And um, in real life, like, there is no one really in my life that is going down this same path as me. And it can sometimes feel really isolating because I feel like half the time I'm going insane and you know, the way that people will kind of interpret me is so strange because no one really knows like what to do with the information that I give them. They're like, so you saw like a past life last night? That's pretty cool. Like, what do you say to that, you know? And that's not me like digging on my friends or anything because I absolutely love my friends and they are really accepting of me. They are really accepting of who I am, but there's acceptance and there's understanding and the way that I'm at at the moment is like they accept me and you know they love me regardless of you know if I had like 10 eyes they probably still love me but they don't get it you know they don't understand my experiences. Um, karmic lessons and dreams. What should I talk about? Oh um, well, yeah there is something that I really want to share with you so yeah, they're a bit burnt. Um, I had a really interesting sleep paralysis slash lucid dream episode um, probably a few weeks ago where um, I literally saw memories from my past life. And I've had recurring dreams for probably like five months now. And these recurring dreams are always in the same location or with the same feeling and it is always sleep paralysis. 
But this particular occasion, I had that recurring dream and there were other dreams that went with it. And what I was kind of, it was like, I, w I just knew. Like I wasn't told verbally, I just knew that these were past life regressions. So this was a lesson from my past life coming back to show me what I needed to learn. So the first um, dream or lesson that was shown to me was um, a memory from when I was quite young. So when I say I in this situation, it's not me as Freya, it's me as whoever I was in that life. When I was a little girl, I was swimming and um, I felt this enormous force on my head and I was really struggling to breathe. I was drowning, you know, I was literally drowning. I couldn't, um, and I was gasping and gasping and gasping for air until eventually I let go. And I was probably around like seven or something then, and I drowned to death. And um, the next one that happened after, and it was so strange because I was told in the dream, and when I say told, I mean I just knew. I wasn't fit, like someone didn't come out of the sky and say, "Oh, and this is what happened here." Like I just, I just knew. But um. I had a very intense fear of water when I was younger. I'm talking like when I did um, swimming lessons, I would cry and sit on the edge of the pool because I just couldn't bring myself to go into the water. It was terrifying for me. And I eventually got out of it because um, the first anxiety attack I ever had I had when I went um, down south with my family and um, we went swimming and we were, I think we were in, um, I think it was probably like Mandra or something, no I think it was Margaret River and there was this like pontoon in the middle of the ocean and everyone was like, woo yeah let's swim out to it, like that looks like sick, that looks like so much fun and I was terrified. It was the deepest I've ever gone into the ocean. And on the way to it, I had a boogie board. So like dad let me like ride on a boogie board on the way out to the pontoon. Um, and then on the way back, when it was time to swim back to shore, my dad, um, and I'm actually thankful for this now, but back in the day I was like, you are a dog, like fuck you. <laughs> but um, on the way back, he told me I wasn't allowed to use the boogie board and he had it in his hands. So I was like, I had to swim back to shore. And I remember um, that's the first memory I have of fear. Like that's the first memory that I can form apart from probably my assault. The next dream I had, I was walking two dogs and um, the dogs didn't like each other and their leads got tangled and then I untangled their leads and then they just like barked at each other. It was hell random, but like one of the dogs was like Genie, which is really strange because like when you're having like past life dreams, you don't really expect your dog to pop up and be like, hey, what's up? But Genie's been with me for a few lives now, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then the next one that I had after that is the one that I have had recurring dreams about for so long now. This dream um, is terrifying and all I know about this dream is that I'm standing in a hallway. I'm standing in a hallway and I'm looking down the hallway at this room with curtains blowing and a really dim dusty light and there's bookshelves to the right of me and like a railing um, going down the stairs and I always have this just awful feeling of dread like something horrible is about to happen I mean they're gonna be murdered or someone's I'm, I'm I don't know what because I never get to the end of the hallway but I know that something is there and it sits with me even when I wake up I have these shooting pains down my leg and in my tummy 
But yeah, that, that was that dream. And then the one that I had after that, like, well and truly, fucked me up. And I don't know if I even want to, like, tell you the full extent of it because it is so personal. But um, I'll tell you a bit about it. So basically, I was quite young in this one, probably like nine. And I was on the couch with um, the person that was my dad in that lifetime. My dad. And we were on the couch, we were listening to records, so I reckon it was probably like one or two lifetimes ago. And um... And all we were doing on the couch together was listening to records and I was listening to his heartbeat. And I knew in this dream that that was the last time that I would ever hear his heartbeat. And I knew that he was going um, to pass away when I was really, really young. And basically, this person was the past life of someone that is in my life currently, or was in my life, sorry. And um, this person was very special to me and I had a very hard time, I guess, letting them go. And you know, when I had this dream, I was still in the process of letting this person go, you know? Um, and this dream, I think, the whole reason it happened was to tell me that this is something that karmically you're going to have to learn eventually if you don't learn to let go of this person now, if you don't learn to live without attachment, learn to live and love without attachment. All of this is going to keep repeating. It's a cycle that's going to keep coming up with a new scenario to show you. And it was basically just saying like, look, like, if you don't let this person go truly, um, you are going to suffer more in the future. So it was it was pretty it was pretty intense the whole scenario. There were a few others as well, but that's the general gist of it, you know, and people can tell me that I'm lying all I want or that it was just like a funky dream, but man, like I know what those dreams mean to me. It's it was definitely from my perspective a past life regression. It was my memory that had come back and resurfaced to show me how far I've come in this life with my healing, to show me um, to show me, I guess, why the fuck all this is happening to me and that it's all connected and that everything in life everything in life is just this circular motion, you know, it's a spiral. Everything that happens to you in your life is either a, an opportunity to grow or a lesson. Everything that happens, in fact, is a lesson because these kind of situations will come back in a completely different form to test you again to see if you have evolved past that. But yeah. Um, I hope you have all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see any more videos like this. Let me know if you like the painting. It's unfinished, but it's getting there. And let me know if you want to see any more videos like this in the future. I love you all lots. And I hope you're having a beautiful day. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love you all so much. And I hope you are all having a beautiful day. I want you to know that you are so very loved and I'm so grateful um, you're here on this journey with me. So enjoy your day. See you later. <laughs>